Hello and welcome to The Scramble. I'm Jenny Lees. Today we'll discuss the debate over genetically modified organisms such as crops mainly used in food. Also we'll talk about illegal immigrants and driver's licenses. And if time allows, we'll discuss the detained Americans in North Korea. Joining us are a group of panelists. We have back with us Brian Hamilton, a graduate student in Journalism and Media Studies. Uh, Sarah Montez de Oca, also a graduate student in Journalism and Media Studies. Uh, Tommy Laren, a, uh, a senior in Journalism and Media Studies. And uh, Bree Padilla, a senior with a double major in Journalism and Media Studies and Political Science. Thank you all for being on the show. Thank, Thank you for having us. The debate over genetically modified crops and food has been a serious one. Currently, 26 countries have banned GMOs, and now Hawaii has passed a bill to restrict GMOs in their state. Now, what are your thoughts, and do you also think other states in the United States may start continuing and, and ban GMOs? I, I'm, uh, you know, all about the, the natural coming from um, a place where everything organic, everything natural is extremely um, looked at or enforced, I guess, uh, in Southern California, um, many people look at those options as alternative where things are organic, naturally made. Um, I mean, what are we putting into our bodies essentially as far as these uh, genetically modified uh, foods, um, all these, you know, preservatives, things that, that other countries don't use or um, just just for the matter of letting food uh, not rot for it to last longer. I mean, what does that tell you? I, I wouldn't want to eat something that's, you know, a fruit that's been sitting out there for a couple of weeks without rotting, not knowing what's in it. Um, I, 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 I agree that it's a good thing that we're starting to really consider gen, gen, genetically modified organisms and what they could potentially do to us and against us or for us in the long term. I think that, um, it's actually one of the arguments for GMOs is that um, there's like it's almost impossible to guarantee as an American consumer that you have not been exposed to it. Like down to the soybeans that are processed for vegetable oil, you've been exposed to the herbicides, insecticides, whatever you want to call it, the genes that they modify or that they trans translate into these plants. Um, that being said, they aren't necessarily good for you. There has been research linked to them causing oof, animal or in animals. They cause organ damage, gastrointestinal and immune system damage, aging, just accelerating aging, infertility. In humans, um, they do leave materials behind. There's already been incidents with the bovine growth hormone, the toxic, uh, the toxic um, residue left by uh, GM's corn in people found in, I'm sorry, especially pregnant women and their unborn fetuses. So we are seeing that Obviously, what isn't natural isn't good, and that it's not the most sustainable way. Not only that, there have been studies that show that crops that are GM crops do not yield increases that will help to support the, um, well, that will ease the hunger problem that we have, and that, that's one of the arguments for using genetically modified mm -hmm. organisms. Natural crops and natural sustainable forms of farming have actually been proven to yield 79 percent increases the definition in crops. of natural here is entirely artificial it's not natural to do crop rotation the, the, it's not the, natural to have a society the wheat we have one to feed. The, i would disagree with that the wheat that we have is a domesticated type of wheat it's not found in the wild it's right. something that we took cultivated and made into something that we can grow uh, my opinion is that the research on this particularly when it comes to produce i i will say that the hormones that they put in animals and livestock products okay. have a much bigger impact on the human system. But the produce, the science is settled. Genetically modified organisms are safe. I think that people, like in California, you were saying uh, they were campaigning to have the, uh, the GMOs labeled, right? Mm -hmm. That's fair. Because mm -hmm. if you want to believe this crackpot science and don't want to eat GMOs, you have a right to know that. I mm -hmm. think that you have a right to avoid that. But the reality of the situation is that you should not deny people the ability to uh, get their GMO produce, which is cheaper, uh, because you disagree with the science, right? Well, there's also science supporting non-GMO products. Uh, in, in 2009, <coughs> the Union of Concerned Scientists report on the failure to yield, actually, which was conducted by the International Assessment of Agriculture, Knowledge, Scientific, and Technology for Development, and that was supported by 400 so scientists in 58 countries. So my question and they all is said that they do, they harm people, they leave things in their bodies, and it's, it's a, well, let me not just, sustainable. I, I, let's take everything you say is true. It's a carcinogen. It's toxic. 
it doesn't yield higher crops. It doesn't increase the life. You know, what is the benefit? Are, are, is it just a nefarious doctor evil? Yes. No, there's, it's, they, they showed in their study that the proof supporting GMOs is anecdotal and that there's no long-term consistent published study as to what the impacts of but, consuming GMOs So what you're be. advocating is on the scale of a conspiracy theory that there are corporations which are planning these on the basis of some dude thinking that it's okay. They've done it's on the market of research. One, but it isn't one. So it, this is the one time the conspiracy theory is true. No, I didn't say that. You said it was on the verge of a conspiracy theory. Right, I said because it's it would not take going the there, though. Complicity of literally the FDA, hundreds of agricultural organizations, but it's not really the corporations, the, the farmers, of the FDA. and everybody growing these GMOs. When in fact, not only is there not a benefit in terms of how much the crop you yield, but they give you cancer. No, but that, would you take Everything that deal? Gives you yeah, cancer. Well, well, yeah. I wouldn't but take not that only deal. that, then how come twenty six countries have banned it? How come there was a month straight of? Uh, uh, riots and protests against Monsanto. There we're, we're not hearing it in the U.S., but it's happening elsewhere, and we are at the center of the universe. So I think that Monsanto and GMOs are two different issues. But Monsanto right? is the largest company that produces genetically right. modified organisms. Not only that, their, I think their CEO is the former U.S. attorney that helped pre push forward the le legalization and F essentially right. the FDA washing their hands of it. He's sitting on that profit well, I right agree now. that we so need he a paved the way for his regulation own career. and that we could probably do a lot better in terms of agriculture mm -hmm. but the science on this issue from scientists that are peer reviewed and have no uh, external agenda and those that do have said that GMOs when it comes to produce do not make a, a noticeable mm -hmm. difference on the human condition well, there, there are a number of people saying that a lot of the studies have, that have that have come out are actually are funded by these same Lobbied, by, right. by these same uh, GMO companies that are producing these. Is that so a problem? Yes. Y Why? Be because it's conflict of interest. Yeah, it, I, it's I agree. One sided with research. Because Does that make it not true, though? That, that absolutely, it, because it they don't it, vet it their experiments biased. properly, which is also what that study. It, there, there's a potential found. for a bias, but just because A is true does not mean B is false. Right, you need to show where the research is false. You can't just say, "Oh, because they paid for it, it right. can't be true." I'm you need to engage the true, argumentation and the but science. I'm that the, yeah, the science but that's to that's an, it's a it's a logical at. fallacy to say you're just attacking the source. You're not attacking the science. If the science is wrong, it should be easy to explain and explain it. The but the problem wrong, is the though, science isn't explained. wrong, and all you can say is the people who funded it are have right. nefarious no. Have nefarious I just moments. said that the study that I cited three times uh -huh. now found that the experiments, the way that they were set up, was wrong. They weren't, they were one-sided, they weren't real experiments, they weren't true tests of science. I'm not saying that there are no so experiments that possible, were not wrong. So there, there's that room for criticism. I'm not saying maybe that that one study totally puts the kibosh on everything that you've been saying. I'm saying that that one study points a very important clue to a very important path that needs to be looked at. I'd like to address that as well, Bree, just because, you know, we can debate over the studies as much as we want to and probably not get anywhere, but what would you say, what do we do? Is it is it a federal ban or do well, we let actually, the states decide? Well, actually, interestingly enough, it's up to consumers. Realistically right. speaking, GMOs are not the entirety of what... I'm, I'm going to have to cut That's you off, fine. but we're going to come back to you after the yeah, break. no problem. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? The parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. 
Welcome back to the show. We we're talking about uh, GMOs and the controversies over over uh, using those. And um, before the break, I cut you off. Yeah, I was, I was just answering Tommy's question, which would be how to change this or how can we change this? And one of the easiest things is that it is actually in the hands of consumers. We are all people. We all are aware of this. We can read. We can look at what ingredients are contained in the food that we eat. Mm -hmm. And But just by doing that, or even states like Hawaii, banning it or regulating it more, a, that small percentage of people in the past, it has worked before, like with the bovine growth hormone, when we were able to get that out of the market. Um, I think like you play Tropicana, a few mm -hmm. other like dairy companies removed GMO using companies from their supply list. So if we can do that, it is actually possible. And, you know, I would agree with you, letting the marketplace decide, I think, is the best way to handle this type of issue. And states should be allowed to regulate it as they see fit and let the people decide and the consumers decide because labeling is probably the most important, just so the consumers know what they're consuming and then let them decide and the marketplace will take care of it. So I would agree with your point. Unfortunately, oftentimes people don't read what they're putting into their bodies. Right. But, you, you know, know, that is kind of a, if you don't, if you don't care, the government right. can't always protect right. you. If so you that don't therefore, care. you make the decision. The consumer is making the decision. Well, I think to roll that, that research would probably be this is a <clears throat> like the labeling okay. should absolutely happen, uh, and there should be a bigger movement to care about what you put in your body. But there should not be an outright ban of a substance that, at least, a significant amount of science. The science is contested on. I'll go that far. I don't think it is, but with respect to my colleague, I'll go that far. The science is contested on that it should not be banned. Well, at least we can all agree that GMO should be labeled. <laughs> we can all agree on labeling. So, yes. so on, that, on that note, we'll go ahead and move on. A growing list of states are allowing immigrants who are in the U.S. illegally to obtain driver's licenses, a measure supported not only by Latino activists, but by police chiefs and insurance authorities, including Nevada. The first driver's licenses for immigrants living in Illinois illegally will be issued in December. What are your thoughts on this? I'd actually kind of like to take the lead on this one just because I've done a little bit of research into it. And in Nevada, it's going to be beginning in January. This is going to take effect. So they're expecting about 60,000 people to take advantage of it. And it's modeled after Utah's law, which has been successful. And whether you agree or disagree. Um, when you say successful, what do you mean? Successful as in it's bringing more people to be insured. So successful okay. in that, right? So the, the main reason why our moderate Republican governor backed this, Sandoval backed this, was because of the insurance issue and trying to prevent that, trying to prevent hit and runs and people that are illegal leaving the scene of an accident because yeah. they're not insured and because for fear of deportation. So in successful in that, right? Sure. And more insured drivers on the road. So that is why uh, Governor Sandoval did decide to back this wholeheartedly so well the, to me it seems like the problem could be solved by enforcing the law <laughs> against residing in the United States illegally exactly. right so instead of saying well, we're gonna enforce one lies we're just gonna make something that's now illegal legal like quasi amnesty right. in right. a way right. which is towards that. which is should be an outrage right uh, because and I'm sympathetic to a lot of immigrants, and I, I think that oftentimes your position on immigration is confused with your position on illegal immigration. Right. The process to, by which you enter the United States should be made profoundly easier, uh, but the border should be tightened, exactly. and people who enter the country illegally should be dramatically reduced. Because they harm everyone they, when you're they, right. when they the, do it the, illegally. The biggest victims of that are illegal immigrants themselves who are often trafficked the inside right the country. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, well, I mean the illegal immigrants. And we're also, or, um, I'm sorry, uh, affected by this by, you know, we're here in this country working class. You know, we mm -hmm. work, we pay taxes. Uh, some of these people, you know, they they kind of... They're in the shadows. Right. They, mm -hmm. they don't live um, by the the law, really. Right. I mean, they're, they're living here illegally and wanting these, these, you know, they come for the American dream, where there are people who live the American dream, do it the right way, come to this country, work hard to where they are, pay taxes, and, and these people are living comfortably, not paying these taxes, getting away with it, and, and, and they're expecting to get a driver's license. Okay. I I'm going to have to cut you off there, <laughs> but I'll, I'll come, back with, come back to you after the break. We'll be back with more. Ever wonder what makes us, the Smurfs, so happy? The forest, of course. This is where we, along with the beautiful forest creatures, make our home with beautiful plant life, clean water, and endless adventures. It's a place to celebrate. So discover the forest with your family today. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Oh, hey, bud. Where, uh, 
Where are you headed? Uh, just gonna hang out. With Gary and Todd? Yeah. I've been meaning to ask you, is there any drinking going on in this crowd? No. If any of your buddies ever pressure you to take a drink, just tell them you promised your dad you wouldn't. I'd do anything to keep you safe. Okay, I will. I hope this is working. I promise. Love you too, Dad. They really do hear you. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. We have a job to do out here today. To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. Looks like a lot of work's going into this. This is what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? Welcome back, and we are talking about illegal immigrants and being able to get driver's licenses. And before the break, Sarah, I, I cut you off. I just wanted to finish on noting that, you know, people who, who come in and expect to live, again, the American dream, work hard, um, do it the right way, you know, you, you, it's a process. It's all a process. It is a process. When, when people come in and just illegally and try to, to get away with, with things that, you know, th they don't follow the law. I'm, I'm in complete um, opposition of that. So you've been kind of quiet. Yeah, <laughs> Brief. I know, right? Um, I'm actually, I, I'm in support of the law. I, for exactly the reasons that government said, that you cited about government handle. But not only that, I think that if you really want to go with it and they're living above the law or whatever, out of the law, um, they're, you think they're going to stop driving anyways? No, but you think they're going to stop trying to go to work? Oh, like, oh, you oh abso no. you know, absolutely. Yeah. I'm I'm going to go to America just so I can get a license and drive a car and no, have some no, health insurance. We're not saying that. We're not saying that that uh, it's going to completely prevent it. We're just saying I think the three of us are kind of in agreement that you're kind of moving towards amnesty and you're kind of giving them a, a freebie, well, I mean, giving them a pass. Realistically speaking, though, there are imm uh, there are my glasses. There's immigration reform laws that they're pushing for that are going towards the naturalization of current immigrants that are residing here illegally. So it's not necessarily, you know, it, it really depends on the ultimate agenda or what you think the ultimate immigration agenda should be of a state or of the federal government. It is up in debate right now. I think we can all agree with that. But my point is, realistically speaking, I am a driver. If somebody hits me, I want them to be able to pay for it. Right, and I don't think and anybody would object to that, but there are two ways about getting that. You can either right. enforce the law or make it easier on people who are breaking the law, exactly. right? And I want enforcement of the law. We also live in a town, law. as you guys, illegal immigration is an issue. We live in a town where a good majority of those people are, they reside here. Go to North Las Vegas, go to a star no. nursery, go to a Home Depot, okay? So, and you know what, those people don't even have cars. They're waiting for their but ride. Would any but other? Like, would somebody be able to break any other law so fragrant, so flagrantly and openly? Like you can, you just named the places where I can find illegal immigrants. Absolutely. Right. Like what kind can, of law though. could I break and get away with it? And you could be like, well, Ryan Hamilton. Knows well, that how is Starlet. okay? How is them driving? So their entire existence is illegal. Their so how presence is them in the United States is unlawful. Going to yes. make it even it, that exacerbates it in what way? I would rather them be able to be protected and insured and be taught how to drive on the road that I'm also on because I am a I citizen of this country and I want to be protected at all. In the United States illegally on the roads illegally. Well, then the just suck them up in a vacuum, man. Like you, you have to deal with the problem at hand. And the fact is, is they are still here. They are not going to leave tomorrow. They are here. They are gonna, not going to leave in the next three months. They're not going to leave in the next two years. Chances are, they're going to have children who are going to be citizens. So you deal with the problem at hand, which is safe drivers. Well, that's like saying a man who's robbed a bank has not been caught five years on, so we might send him to jail, but his kid gets to keep the money he stole. That's not fair. He broke There's the law. There's a statute of limitations, too. If it's, he's not caught right. for a certain number of years, people are not going to stop driving. Himself. People are not going to stop driving regardless, but it's 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 what we've been saying. It gives them the incentive. Okay, well, you know, you, you're here against the law, but we're going to give you I a driver's you license regardless. what a genuine incentive for driving is. Well, well it's, it's not just not driving. It's being it's being able to be paid under the table. It's being able to put your kid in school. It's happening anyways. They're well, driving right. anyways. Right. But my, my point is plug the incentives, which I think is yours, which is yours as well, right? You need to prove your citizenship to get schooling. You need to prove your citizenship to get Medicaid. You need to prove your citizenship to get the services that are meant for American citizens. And if so you can't you go do to that, you can't go to other countries and just get a driver's already, license. You're going to backlog the system that's already backlogged. Even in Europe. Backlogged. 
with more paperwork, a system that you just said, it needs to be infin infinitely easier An American to get citizen? into this country. So that's already a bureaucratic issue. You want to add m more bureaucracy on top of it? As an American you citizen, you can't go to Mexico and get a driver's license. So what okay. makes that okay here? Well, it's not that have, easy. Well, we have apparently have an illegal immigration problem we where do. people are driving on the roads like and they're illegal immigrants and they're not insured. And if they hit somebody, they will either hit and run them, they will not be able to pay for their damages, and if they damage the city, they won't be able to, to pay cut for that you off there. I'm going to have to cut you off there. But it's been a really heated discussion, and we'll be back after break. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing. We're just playing. I'm trying to get you out of here. Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Welcome back to the show, and we are moving on with topics. Uh, North Korea has detained two Americans, one of whom is an 85-year-old man being held for his involvement in the Korean War in the 1950s. Now, what are your thoughts about this latest incident? And is North Korea just trying to get attention from Western media? Is that a possibility? Uh, do you want to start with us, Tommy? You know, I think we can all agree that, you know, somebody being detained is obviously not a good thing. The, the person that's being detained currently was a veteran and, and went back to reminisce for memory's sake and then was detained. And then now they had him read a series of things, basically admitting war crimes, and he was, they believe he was compelled to do that, which I'm, I'm sure he was. Um, and I think that the core of all of this is the Kim Jong-un trying to get attention or trying to make a statement, you know, his, him trying to step in the place of his father and show the United States that he means business. And I think it's more for publicity than anything that they think they're really going to gain out of it because then what are they going to gain from detaining an 85-year-old? Not a whole lot. But I'd be interested to see what you guys think about that. It's also got to be a domestic distraction, too. I mean, when you don't have enough food to, f to feed your people, when, you know, you're incarcerating a huge number of them in labor camps. Uh, mm -hmm. you got this guy who's going to be a little bit of bread and circus for a little while. And uh, what's crazy to me is how this guy thought it was even remotely a good idea. Like, a lot of the responsibility has to be on him. We know North Korea is a fairly predictable, unpredictable actor. Right. It's not like he was going to roll up and they were going to give him a limousine and drive him around. He had to have known. Well, others have, they made the argument that others have visited in the past and it wasn't an issue, and mm -hmm. then they specifically targeted him. We don't know for what reasons. They're saying it's because of his involvement in the Korean War. Whether that's that seems like that a or good whether reason. they just picked somebody <laughs> out and decided that they were going to target them or not. But he was targeted. Mm -hmm. So that's why I agree with you. It's a publicity stunt. Yeah. It's a distraction. It's I wouldn't go to North Korea. Sick. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Why, would go. Like why take Korea a chance? Just kind of wagging its tongue out. I mean, yeah. Americans don't really like hearing any time that there's any anti-American sentiment in the world. And so that's kind of, <laughs> no, there's generally a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's just kind of really like, hey, we don't like you guys still. Um, but realistically, uh, I think it's interesting that that was the way that they went about it, was the war crimes. 
And I think that that might mm -hmm. speak to a larger societal impact that we maybe haven't foreseen or didn't foresee. Mm -hmm. Because um, they're obviously still feeling that if that's if well, that's what's now, being though? cited. I mean, it's, it's well, that's a really well, that's odd that's time. that's what I'm saying is that maybe in their society there there's there's something to be investigated for you know our Secretary of State and diplomatic relations there. Yeah, I I, I mean as for the American public, I would much rather than be concerned with GMOs. <laughs> well, well I was just going to say maybe we should send him some GMOs so they have some food, <laughs> there we go. They have some food yeah. for a little maybe while. Leave us alone. Maybe that's what he needs. <laughs> Higher crop yield. No, it's not though. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, you have any uh, quick thoughts on this? Again, just kind of going off of what Ryan said, I wouldn't go to North Korea. I mean, that maybe he had some sort of sentiment that he wanted to go to the touch South base on, look. but he but to um, unfortunately, it, it's what they did and what he did, and because of his involvement. He's got mm -hmm. medical issues too, which is at the well, core of it for his family. A, a great discussion. Well, everybody in North Korea has free medical care. I have to cut <laughs> you oh, off. You I have go. to cut you guys off there. <laughs> we'll be back with set. more. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I don't think anyone captured my first steps on camera. I was the fifth kid, and by that time, first steps weren't a big deal. I was 16 and driving home with my brother Ben. A distracted driver hit us. Ben died on impact. I had 47 days in a hospital bed for reality to settle in. With a major spinal cord injury, doctors said I would never walk again. But deep down, I knew I would. I prayed that every day. Family, friends, strangers, all started to pray for me to be able to walk again. The progress has been slow and the victories hard won, but I feel the prayers. Whether you need support in a tragedy or just to make it through a bad day, prayer can make a difference. America, let's come together by believing with each other. For someone to come alongside you and say, I'm going to believe with you, it means a lot. Thanks everyone. Now you know what we think. Let us know what you think. Share your opinions and any ideas or topics you'd like us to scramble about to the scramble.unlv at gmail.com. You can also catch full episodes of the scramble at unlv.tv. And this is actually my last show as a host. I wanted to take the opportunity to say a few words. Uh, first, I'm incredibly thankful for the opportunity to be the host of The Scramble for the third season. And I'm delighted the show will continue with Tommy Laren being the new host in the next season. Also, uh, we couldn't do the show without the great student and guest panelists that make this show unique. And finally, a special thanks to Heather Fairberger, the student <laughs> producer who has spent countless hours with me coming up with show topics and ideas. I hope you've all had as much fun watching the show as I've had hosting it. For all of us here at The Scramble, thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you in the spring.